For almost 20 years, an Iowa family has dealt with a mystery, the disappearance of a Dubuque man and his car, both seeming to vanish without a trace. It was November of 1990, and Paul Kanakal of Dubuque didn't show up for Thanksgiving dinner with his family. Now, that wasn't like him. Kanakal, who never married and never had any children of his own, lived for spending time with his family. Investigators believe Kanakal may have wound up in the Mississippi River either by accident or as a suicide or a homicide, but that's just a theory. That makes We're here on the bank of the Mississippi River in East Dubuque, Illinois. Back behind us is Dubuque, Iowa. We're here in the search for Paul Joseph Knockle, who is 53 years old and went missing officially November 26, 1990. 1990, that's 1990. when he was actually reported missing, but he's believed to have gone missing on the 13th, also seen on the 14th, and again on the 17th. Yeah. The car that we're looking for is very unique. It's a 1981 Mercury Zephyr. Yeah. The only Zephyr I've ever heard of like, is, is in Disneyland, yeah. so, and that's like a flying mm -hmm. Zephyr. Yeah. So I never even saw this car, and cars will pop it up on screen right here. Maroon in color. So Paul was 53 at the time, 265. Same height as me, 5'10", so a little bit on the larger side. And when his car was spotted on November 13th, 14th, one of those days, mm -hmm. it was on the 151 bridge up here, the green bridge up here. And then a few days later, supposedly, no credible, like it's not like a, hey, we have license plates or anything, like we pulled this car over that I know of, seen in Grant County in the Wisconsin side. And right. we're really in a tri-state area right now to where we have Wisconsin upriver from here on this side, we're in Illinois right now, and then Iowa is right on the other side. So, you know, nice little tri-state area. We're coming back to kind of a story that, you know, has become really more of a, the more we do these, the more this is an identical story. Right. We have an older gentleman who was very quiet, kept himself, didn't have family, didn't have any children, yep. you know, and kind of worked minuscule jobs but he was getting together with his family for Thanksgiving and it wasn't until two weeks later, yeah, you know, or two or three weeks later when the family finally said he didn't show up for Thanksgiving, we should probably yeah. at this point report him missing. And they thought that that was really suspicious because when there are family events such as Thanksgiving, he had always showed up. Yeah, yeah, and, it, was, it was Uncle Paul. Yeah, and even his job, you know, was like, hey, this is, this is not him, you know, something's wrong. We're always grateful for everybody that gives us those tips as to where we should be going next such as the fisherman that put us in on this spot that says he located two vehicles under here, which is why we're here, but also additional volunteers that come out to help us as we're out here on these missions. We're gonna introduce you to them right now by bringing you back in time right now. Well, even at that, I mean, the, the river channel has to be maintained a minimum of 10 foot for the barge traffic. Uh -huh. And it's deeper than that, don't get me wrong, but it's, with all of the boats on this river, somebody would have found that car. Right. Not, and I have no doubt in my mind. I mean, it's a big walleye tournament area, um, big bass fishing tournament area. I've spent countless hours on this water. I used to work for a local barge company years ago, went up and down this river. Right. So, I mean, there's some pools and pockets, and we got lots of wind dams and eddies, and but you'd have to get a car way out to get to them for the most part. So we have Paul that was spotted on September 3rd, or last spoke with his family on September 3rd. Vehicle was spot. I'm sorry, oh, November. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was before Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then he was last seen on this bridge for some reason. He was parked up here, and then four days later he was spotted over in Grant County, and then he never showed up at work. Oh, see, I never heard of that one. And then he never yeah. showed never showed up at work, and he never showed up for Thanksgiving. For right. And, and a family member said that they thought they saw what was his car on the bridge or just over the bridge, 
and I know they did an extensive search of all the timber around that area, but there's no way to get a car. If somebody was to push it over the edge to go down, it'd end up in a ravine at the bottom. It would never make the water. So they would have found it. And if it made it far enough, it would hit the tracks. Right. Yeah, yeah, like this boat ramp too. Right. Like I said, I mean, you have boats in the, out of there all day long. Sometimes it's too shallow for you. And right to now, you, if you get out far enough, and I noticed when I drove in, there's the big island that sticks out, yeah. turns green every year when the water's low enough. Yeah. Yeah, um, so, so yeah, so this boat ramp is off the radar. Let me take a look at my email, though, see if I can find Hawthorne's, where that other boat ramp was. The Hawthorne one's right up here, right out Kerper and straight up north. Um, and that drops off into a little bit deeper water because you have a, spl a split where the main channel comes down and Piazza Channel cuts off. So it, there's a big cutout in there. Um, and it's a solid limestone dirt bank on the south side, or on the yeah, east south side. So um, that'd be, that would be where I would think, because it's deep enough and it's gonna either catch the current and go one or two ways. It's gonna go down the channel, or it's gonna roll around and come into the Piazza Cut. And that's if they went off the ramp. In looking at the boat ramps here, you know, this one we already looked at, it's too far into the cove that I would write that off. I would also write this one off, you know, if this is something he's gonna do on his own because it's not putting him far enough out. Right. The East of Buke one, I think that's where we need to start our day because it puts you, if you are in a state of mind where you're gonna be doing this on your own, then that's the one that's gonna put you farthest out into the river for chances of being mm -hmm. gone. Okay. And we also have sonar images from another fisherman. All right. Well, I say uh, we start our day over there. So you guys want to hang out for the day, you're welcome to follow us. That green bridge over there, that's the uh, 151 bridge. That's the bridge that we were just parked at over by the park. We just crossed over the 20 bridge, coming over to the East Dubuque boat ramp is where we're going to right now on the Mississippi River. This particular case was brought to us by Misty Whitlatch, as well as a fisherman who was out here with sonar. And I believe it's the second piling that we're actually gonna be heading out here today because he spotted two vehicles. He said that the local fire department went down on a vehicle out here, but it's not very clear whether they actually made it out there. It's almost like there was some stories as to reasons why they could never go out to one of those two vehicles. Mm -hmm. Like the current was too strong or it was too deep or for whatever reason, yeah. there's no confirmation that I know of that either one of those two vehicles have been, you know, eyes have been put on them. We're gonna go find them, we're gonna go mark them. We're also gonna go down river even further because as we've learned, you know what, we need to go further than we even think we need to go. And then do we need to go even further than that? Yeah. We continue to learn. We appreciate you being here. We're getting in the water right now and see if we can bring Paul home today. start every one of our episodes where we get on the water if you've never been here before we'd like to give you a little sonar education overview so you can follow along as to what it is that we're looking at we have two different um, uh, two different companies manufacturers here we have hummingbird over here we love using the down imaging and the side imaging and the way that you read this one is it's more of a picture in time so you're looking at you know a picture that has happened and it's recording that so like back here there was a fish and this is recording what we're going over right now you can see our depth on here 17 feet and anything from the top of the boat here water column that's black is the water and then there is the river bottom now with side imaging we found that casting 75 feet to the left and 75 feet to the right is best. So here's our boat, and anything from the boat to the bottom is a water column. So again, you can follow along with the grids and tell how deep the water is. Now this one over here is Garmin. This is a Garmin live scope that we're using uh, for that transducer, and this is in real time. So any if like a fish swim by, you're gonna see that happening in real time. So picture in time, real time, and the readings are very similar. One might be down, you know, an extra few inches or so. Anyway, so that's a sonar overview, and we're going to get out here 
and we're actually going to return back to the boat ramp so that way we can do a proper uh, perimeter we're going to go next to the shore out about 35 feet and we're going to run it down probably let's do this one four or five hundred yards doug yeah. and then we'll move in and we'll come back up now our speed that we're looking for also is 1.9 to 2.5 miles an hour is best because the current in here is so slow we can actually do sonar down river and up river in some other rivers that we're in it's going to be pushing you along at four to six you know, miles an hour or knots with that that's just way too fast and so with those higher current rivers you will always see us moving up river for a proper scan so it's a it's a drop off then huh? so that means we got to stay as close as we can and scan out before we move out and so what Doug is touching on there is some of the things that we've learned. Because of the way that sonar works, think of it as being in a dark room when you are shining a flashlight here, you'll see like the shadow behind of the silhouette of your object. Well, if your object happens to be up close to like a, uh, yeah, like a riverbank here, it's not giving it time to have the shadow. And so, you know, your, your target, your object is gonna blend into that back area. So for that, we've learned that our first pass that we want to do, it used to be, you know, 50 to 70 feet out so we can cover more area right away. But we've learned that because of the banks and how they come down, we might be missing something. So now we've uh, changed some of our procedures and we scan right about 25 to 35 feet out for our first pass. Yeah, see, it, it's coming up quick. It's coming up to two feet. <clears throat> so watch to make sure we don't bottom out. Oh, and that was just that, like right here? Yeah. Now it's getting deep again. Like it just went whoop, and then back down. So now we're back down to 11 feet now. Yeah, that's like they probably just came and pushed a bunch of sand in here. Well, the other thing could be as well, like that could be a newer bridge maybe, and there could have been an older bridge back in the day. And so that we could have had like some older pilings over here. I've seen that quite a bit as well. And so with this piling here that we're passing right now, that's what we see right here. So we cannot see anything behind that piling right now. And if anything is right here, pushed up against it, we're not gonna be able to see that very good either. So real quick, since we're on this side of it. Live scan, down. We'll do live scan and we'll do down imaging and then potentially get a better side scan of it as well, coming over next to that piling. And you, and, and I know that you, you explain this so that those of you who do not know what sonar is, you can, like you said, you can follow along and you can understand what it is we're looking at, but also it's a, it, it's a way of letting other people who want to know how to do this to get out there and do it and, and demonstrate what it is and what it takes to actually find something underwater. Just got a lot of uh, rocks there. Real clean or? Yeah, I mean, it's clean, a lot of rocks, but okay. it's clean rocks. Okay. All right, so we know that that's clear. So we'll stay on this side. We'll keep running the 25 to 35 foot out. And let's go run it a couple hundred yards down. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's probably safe. No matter what the current is, if it's a river, we just we just go down because we don't know what may have been going on at the time. If there's you know? a big flood happening at yeah. the time, yeah. that vehicle could be a lot further down for sure. And the Mississippi is not a small river either. It's a it's a very large river, and if there's any significant weather force in the region, everything's going to feed into the Mississippi. So when something like this pops up on screen, like I can tell this is not a car, it's probably a log, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna take you back over that and kind of help you read this even better. Is it's, I know that it's roughly 36 feet to my right and that we just passed over it. So we're gonna turn the boat around. We're going to look for some of the, the, like that water track that we just came down, knowing that I'm moving over 36 feet. I'm gonna head back up. And then what I'm gonna try to do is pinpoint us right over it with live scope as well as with down imaging and side imaging again, so we can really get a good reading on it and tell exactly what it is from multiple angles. And then as we're, since I moved over 36 feet now, you can see that path that we just came down. As soon as we come over it, the other thing I like to do is take a mark on the shore so I know roughly where it is in relation to horizontal in the river and then also try to pay attention to how far out we are as well all right so here it is right here so now it's off to the right so it's right off that those big brushes right there and that tree and it's a tree is what it is but now we're going to circle back around and it's roughly 18 feet long 
a log that's laying in the river. But now we're gonna see if we can get it. And this is how we identify objects underwater. So now, two miles an hour, and there it is, there's the log. You can tell it's a one foot tall, and it's still off to the right, just barely a little bit. All right, and that's how we find things. And I say that if you can find a 18 foot long log that's one foot tall, you can find yourself a car, if this is what you wanna do. Mighty Mississippi River in East Dubuque, Illinois, my hometown. His hometown's <laughs> across the creek. We call the river creek, not a not a river. He's out on the water, out in Mississippi. He's scanning for cars or other items of interest, possibly that might be out there. Hopefully, he'll find Paul oh. Joseph Knuckle. You yeah. say the K. Chris Anderson. I'm originally from Dubuque. I saw the, one of the posts where he mentioned where they were going to be, and I thought, well. That's my hometown, so it's been what 1990, I believe it was, so 30 some years, roughly 31. So, yeah, it'd be nice to give closure to a family. talking about this one back on the Iowa side because he lived on the Iowa side even though he was seen over here a few days later we don't know if he really was taking that out of the equation I think what we need to do is find these 2100 block 2100 Washington Street where he lived where is where he lived so that's going to take us right here so we know that, that this is his location so 2100 Washington Street now from there what is the closest most likely boat ramp from there it really is Miller, where where we were this morning where we were this morning i mean technically i ruled that out yeah but that close and it comes back to jared you don't rule things out that's <laughs> you know that are kind of obviously the closest is there any other body of water that is the closest to that as well we also have this little slough here that comes in and that comes in is an entire slough i think that was actually dry this morning well i mean it's showing on here as water right now from that image but if it was this was taken in like summertime you're gonna have water in there yeah that's what we were looking at this morning that that's doesn't even exist really right and then we were out on a little island here with the boat ramp so what if we put it in the boat ramp we scan the boat ramp in the cove there that we and, saw and then yeah and then we can just take the boat from right there and come into this cove just to clear it, I well, no, you can't get through there. So there's no tunnel to get through there. And you would actually have to hike over the road. And I don't know if this is public or this is private. Oh, we have a parking area here. I'm not from here, but I'm sure everyone in Dubuque, the, the major waterway, the most prominent waterway forefront on everybody's minds is gonna be the Mississippi, nothing else. At least in the immediate area. Right. But we, I mean, we do have this road that goes back here. This is closest to his house. We'll have to check to see if that was there 30 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I can pull it up on my uh, other computer. Well, I mean, I think it is. But that's where I would go next is let's just go to this little parking lot. And I'll double check it on the computer before we roll over here. But it's quiet. It's out of the way. Mm -hmm. It may not be deep enough. It may be deep enough. But let's just go there and see. And if it's not deep enough, we. Yeah. I mean, it, it, if it's not deep enough, then it just moves us quicker to the next point and one step closer to finding it. All right, Make a U three and a half miles away. Let's go hit it.
takes the closest body of water out of the equation. So then it comes back to Doug, the every older gentleman that we've ever dealt with has always been a find the biggest, swiftest body of water. That's why we ended up on the East Dubuque boat ramp first, because that was the most swiftest closest to this house. Yeah. We're now, this boat ramp right here that we're gonna head to is the closest to his house, but it's kind of in the cove. But again, we don't wanna rule anything out. So let's go knock that one out real quick. A vehicle that's been in here for 30 years is gonna be two to three feet already buried, at least. So you gotta take into consideration this old car is probably only about five and a half feet tall, sitting on land. If that, it's a really small Mercury Zephyr. So take two to three feet away from that, you know, you only need three, four feet of water to bury the car. Another variable to this as well is the Mississippi, which we're on right now, is the only major body of water to the area. He went missing in 1990, but in 1993, there was a major flood here in this region. You know, the, the, the locks were all over flooding and um, it could have been buried very well could have been buried but we can't rely on that so we're gonna check no matter what so far very clean just that stump and the log and a lot of fish which we knew this was very shallow on average six feet, but we are talking about this being as low as it gets. Well, kind of marks this one off the list. Four feet deep the entire way or? Six and a half to eight feet the entire way. Oh, I mean. Which eight, is enough. Eight is enough, yeah. And if you take into consideration 30 years, a car is probably, you can take two to three feet away from it right. being buried. So definitely it's possible uh, because there's no current in this. I scanned it up and I scanned it across. Um, and all I found was a stump and a log. Other than that, there's nothing in here. In O'Leary's, if you're on Sunfish, which I pointed out on the map, is the, above the dam above the flood wall. They cut a channel in there for boats to get to the boat ramp. Yep. Otherwise you can walk across it. I could walk from where the boat ramp is. I could walk all the way across to the far shore by the railroad tracks, which is probably a mile. So they keep the boat ramp nice and clean and they have for 30 plus years. No, that's something they started probably maybe 20 years ago. No, that's what I'm saying though. So, that, so then it wasn't even there 30 no, years ago. There was no boat ramp on the up. There was, but it was, not the back. It was treacherous. Right. Yeah. This is a new ramp like this. Nice. Okay. Um, and then in O'Leary's Lake itself, the deepest I've ever seen that is nine feet. It was at this shallow, and that was a higher pool. Right. But at this shallow, I'll bet it ain't even six feet. Yeah. And I 100% they would have known if something was in there because in the wintertime, like even with my graph in the wintertime, I can scan. 10 feet out either side of me and you just keep pole hopping. Right. So they would have found something in there. So really that just brings us down to Hawthorne only then and then we're out of locations to search in the area. Uh, in my opinion, I think so. Okay. Not that I want to see it leave, but. Well, you know, I mean, f fingers crossed. Let's go uh, put the boat in over there and see if we can find Paul over that one.
over here. And he says that those guardrails have always been there since like the 80s. And he says that from time to time they will replace them. But, but this is where people come for like fireworks and everything. And he says that, yeah, there, there's, he says that there's no reason to go scanning. And what we know is just because there's a guardrail doesn't mean anything. We're going to scan it anyway. It's not that I don't trust you, Chris. We just learned a few things. I'm not saying that Paul is or is not there. I'm just saying we, we've learned not to do it. So it's going to be the second push up before it finishes dark. So you have the concrete one. So you have the big round one, and then you have the push. It's the, it's the third. It's the third push. So the one past the concrete. All right. So I'm going to park us right over at the light scope. Ten more feet. There it is, right there. So that's what I'm interested in. So you're looking at the length of. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That thing almost looks like a little boat. There. Okay, so that is two, four feet tall. I want to know if that's metal or not. Okay. That makes sense. Two, four feet tall. Yeah. And buried. And buried. Yeah, you're going to have to expect two to three or more feet of it to be buried already. Yeah. Alright, so I see your magnet right there. Alright, go down another four feet. Okay, right there. Okay, right, uh, come up like two feet. Do you see my magnet? I don't see your magnet anymore. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see your magnet. Okay, keep it there. I'm gonna bring you right into it. You're like four feet away from it. You can take your cord. So your magnet is behind this. I'm coming up on it. And now if you drop right, hold on, uh, like you were right at the front of it. I felt something, yeah. So you're right at the front of it and it's 12 feet in length. Yeah, yeah, I felt something because now my magnets just dropped down. Yeah, so now I'm gonna take you forward over it. So you're, you should be dragging right across it right now. Are you feeling it? Now it's just bouncing off. It's bouncing off. Do you see it? Well, now it's behind me. And now your magnet's behind us. And now I'm lower. Now, I'm going to right, I'm I'm drag. Okay, now your magnet's on. Now your magnet is at the back of it. I'm just looking back up. Yeah, I thought they dropped in. Back up. Keep lying with that bush. Okay, here. Okay, now go straight down. I feel it. Yeah, I feel yeah, it. You're right on top I of it. Right now. now I don't feel it. You know, I, I gotta take it back to the ground. But you're just not latched on it. Yeah, it's not. Okay, we're directly over it. Bounce your magnet. Let's see where it's going. Okay, you're bouncing all over it right now. I think it's a boat. Think so? I think it's a boat. I mean, it, it looked to me like an, uh, it had like a yeah, curved man. front, like a pointed front in one image, but.
you made the comment, yes, about the guardrail and, the, and all of that up there. And it, the only time that's ever been changed, where I've ever seen nothing there was when they redid this part. Right. Um, they took out the old guardrail. I think right now it's just wire. No, there's, there's guardrail it, there. Even up here in the grass area? Oh, no, in the grass area, yeah. I think it's just wire. Yeah. Um, but all of that up along the road, that's been there forever. In the, the end of the day, I mean, that wraps this one. There's nothing else we can do. There's nowhere else to look. Our, our biggest thing is, you know, asking, you know, you, the viewer, we appreciate, you know, who's coming out today and, you know, you guys coming out as well. And, you know, our, our entire show and the purpose and the, our ability to come out here has been because of you guys. And if you happen to have a case that you know of where a, you know, a person is involved, where they're in their vehicle, suspected to be underwater, please get a hold of us at support at adventuresofpurpose.com. This is how we find what missions to go on next. We don't solve them all. Fortunate, you know, we were able to solve one yesterday, and we yeah. hope we're, we're, you know, right now, everyone we've been going on, we think that we're going to be able to solve it. And tomorrow we're Sandra Ecker, Sandra Ecker, Sandra Ecker, Franklin, Wisconsin. So we're heading over to that one yeah. tomorrow, and fingers crossed, you know, we're going to be able to solve that one. Yeah, you guys got um, a good track this, record, though. I this, mean, for this, eleven of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This 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 particular one, you know, we we ruled out all the areas within vicinity that makes sense. And with the knowledge of three to four major floods over the last 30 years, there's a potential with it. He's it, 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 here, he's just buried. And we, we, 100%. We, yeah. Chris, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good. Thank you to everybody that was here with us today. Like I said, we could not be doing this without you. If you have not already subscribed, please do so and know that subscribing doesn't cost you anything but it does help the algorithm and it does help us to get the word out. We also have a membership to where you do get videos early, consider it a small monthly donation, like you're buying us a cup of coffee for the road or you're fishing in for gas. On that note, we really appreciate you being here. We'll see you on the next one. Hopefully we're gonna solve.